This is Street Knowledge with Chris Graham. Welcome to the podcast. Chris Graham and Scott German. And it's Monday night, big Monday, and big comeback for Virginia. Virginia down seven with 7.51 to go. 21-6 run to close the game out. And the Hoos come home with the win, 69-61. Maybe the most impressive win. I don't know, I'm not sure maybe is the case here. Most impressive win I've seen a Virginia team have in a long time from a team that wins a lot of games. Scott, we've been talking about that since uh, we, we got on the phone with each other before we came on the air here. This is just impressive, considering all the circumstances for Virginia to pull this win out tonight. Yeah, it's not just the fact that they won't give a game better than one. I mean, but the situation, coming back, bouncing back after just getting thumped Saturday night, um, 48 hours, we saw the game, we saw the hospital environment that, uh, that were playing in front of. Um, they get down in the second half, you know, they had a little bit of a comfortable at halftime, then did jump the horse back, take the lead. But, you know, the team could have collapsed right then. They could have just folded it. But they did what Virginia did. They stick to what they do. They stick to the game plan. They, they, they ran their offense. Um, finished the game hitting seven of the last eight shots. The Cardinals missed their last eight. So, I mean, we shouldn't be surprised, but it's hard not to be surprised. But, you know, it, it's Virginia basketball. And um, it, it's just an incredible win for them. It's, it's, a, it's just a, uh, and then, you know, again, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised in one way, yet it, it, it's not surprising because we know that this is the way this team plays. They're a bunch of blue collar players and they're, they, they, they're focused, they play, they play, they follow the game plan. Um, you know, they, 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 they you know, the green runs to the top. Again, Carolina, that did not look like a so solid, um, team towards the end of that game when, it, when, when a lot of chaos was breaking loose. Yeah, Carolina, Scott noted, missed their last eight shots, two of their last 14 in the last 7.51 after taking, at that time, a 55-48 lead. I was going to set the scene because I wrote this in my game preview. You know, this game was scheduled almost by the ACC to be a loss for Virginia. You play at home against Duke on Saturday night, less than 48 hours later, in Chapel Hill. Only two times this season is an ACC team playing on the road against an ACC team on, on a Monday that had played at home on Saturday. Carolina played at home on Saturday against Miami and won in overtime, but still played at home. Didn't have to travel. Uh, Virginia happened to travel after the you know the short break after playing Duke in the biggest ACC game of the season Saturday night. Uh, then you got Ty Jerome. We all saw it on the on, on the uh, on the TV broadcast. You see Ty Jerome during media timeouts sitting on the bench by himself. Uh, getting treated for his back issues. I mean, so he's Mamadi Diakite doesn't start. It didn't look like he didn't start because of the 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 headbutt with DeAndre Hunter, that inadvertent headbutt that they you know the issue they had in the, the first half of the Duke game that kept Diakite out of the second half of that game. Uh, it looked more like a coach's decision to try to start Kia Clark uh, on Kobe White uh, to try to get uh, you know some good on ball defense pressure on the uh, UNC freshman point guard, and that worked for a large stretch of this game. Uh, but Diakite then eventually did play 23 minutes off the bench, and very, a very effective 23. It's only scoring six points, but playing great defense for Virginia. But so you, all that said, I mean, you played the tough game. You know, you're not 100% healthy. Carolina, seven-game winning streak coming into this game, 9-1 uh, and one in the ACC. I mean, this is written to be a Carolina win. Then Virginia plays great first half, 36-29 lead at the half. Virginia shoots 55% from the floor in the first half. Uh, and uh, and then Carolina comes out 17-3 run, uh, takes that 55-48 lead under the eight-minute timeout. And uh, it just felt like, you know, it just felt like that was it. You, you know, Virginia had given a good shot to North Carolina. They were running out of gas. And then down the stretch, Carolina goes 2 of 14 from the floor in that last 7-51. Uh, Virginia goes 8 of 10 in the last 7-51, including 7 of the last 8. And, uh, and gets the win. And uh, so all that said, I mean, you know, beating this Carolina team on full rest, 100% healthy, would be impressive. All the things I just laid out there, wow. That's that's probably the most impressive win for an ACC team this season, including the 148 hours ago, Duke beating Virginia in Charlottesville. Uh, I was just making 
Kirk's the middle of us. I think it's the biggest regular season win for Virginia in years. I think it was bigger than last year's win at Duke. Yeah. Just because of the circumstances leading up to this game. Because you can go back, you know, we lost to Saturday to, to, to Duke. And, a, and a, just an unbelievable, uh, uh, the, the atmosphere in JPJ, the, 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 the light, the, the glitter, tough walls. Um, but you could not two games prior to that. And we did not play well in either of those two games. Very unrealistic turnovers. High level turnovers. We still see 15 turnovers in those two games. And then tonight, two turnovers, maybe two, maybe three turnovers in the second half. Three. Uh, three officially, yes. Well, three. Um, uh, you know, it just, this game, we could have, this could have easily been a loss, but this team, I love, I do not like Dave Bellis that much. Uh, he's not one of my favorite Tom Bates, neither after what Jay Williams had to say after the game about UVA. Um, uh, he's not at the top of my list either. Of the comment, uh, Dillis, I don't know if you heard that, but, um, it was something to the effect that Virginia looked like um, I'm not sure, but um, yeah. a bunch of Boy Scouts, but they play like a motorcycle. <laughs> Do you ever watch Sons of Anarchy? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they yeah. The leather jackets on. Uh, they make they may fit right in with that crowd, especially when they're out on the floor. Um, you know, they just are, are such a boys team, such an extension of, of Coach Bennett. Uh, they're just a heck of a fun team to follow. Luke May looks like the Cavman mascot, but he does not like playing Virginia. He had four points tonight, two of ten from the floor. That's typical for him. As good as an ACC player as he is, he came in. Bill has noted that during the game broadcast. He'd come in averaging over 20 points a game his last three. Four points on two of ten shooting. You know, you look up and down the uh, Carolina roster. In fact, only one. This is amazing. I'll have to write about this in my post game. One Carolina player shot 50% or better from the floor who took a shot. That was Brooks, five of eight. White, had, Kobe White, the, the, the star point guard who had 33 the other day in that overtime comeback win over Miami, he had 17. It took 19 shots to get there, 6 of 19 from the floor. Uh, Cam Johnson, 6 of 14, 16 points. Uh, Kenny Williams, who made two threes uh, to start the game, ends up with 9 points, 3 of 10 shooting. May I mention four, uh, 4 points on 2 of 10. Uh, so Carolina on the game, 35.4% from the floor. Uh, Virginia on the other side, though, I mean, very efficient offensive game. DeAndre Hunter, 20 points, 7 of 10 shooting, 3 of 3 from 3-point range. Kyle Guy, 7 of 13, 20 points, 5 of 9 from 3-point range. Uh, Ty Jerome, 5 of 9 shooting, 2 of 3 from 3, 15 points, 11 assists, just 2 turnovers. Scott noted this uh, for our listeners out there. Virginia had 3 turnovers in the second half, 7 in the first half. So that the first half played like Virginia had been playing the last, say, 3.5 games. You know, they've been averaging over 14 turnovers per game in that stretch, dating back to that NC State game. And seven turnovers first half was trending towards 14, but just three turnovers in the second half of Virginia. And uh, ball value was very important there for that Virginia team uh, in, in the second half. Uh, Virginia ends up, after starting off cold, cold is, uh, the, the, cold is the winner in the, in the second half, ends up at uh, 50% for the second half, 53.3% for the game. And so all those numbers... Uh, this was a Virginia game, and I'll say this number two. Throw this out there, and then we'll talk more about the game action. Uh, possession, a number of possessions in this game. Virginia averages 60. Carolina averages 75. Virginia is 353 in the nation, which there, there are 353 teams in Division I basketball in tempo. Carolina was fifth coming in, averaging 75. 60 possessions in this game. Virginia controlled the pace. Virginia controlled the game. Um, absolutely. That's... that's Certainly a big, big time. So I'm going to turn the tables on a little bit. I'm just going to throw the player's name out because I know what I think his contribution is tonight. And I'm going to throw it out and let you tell me why. Uh, and he only played eight minutes, Jay Huff. But tell me why Jay Huff should get singled out tonight. You know, he played very important. He only played eight, but he played. Big minutes, and let me look at his plus minus because, uh, you know, I'm thinking his plus minus is going to be pretty good here. His plus minus was the best on the team, plus eight. 
uh, he played. You know, he, he he didn't check out until the uh, under the under, under a minute to go. He scored the basket that put Virginia ahead to stay, uh, but he also played some good defense down the stretch. Uh, I'm looking at his numbers now. He didn't have any blocked shots. He altered a couple of shots. He did have two rebounds, both defensive rebounds, both key rebounds in that stretch. But uh, his defense, and then he scored the basket uh, that, uh, that that put Virginia ahead on that nice pass from DeAndre Hunter uh, about three minutes to go. Uh, you know, Jay, Jay has been getting 8 to 10 to 12 minutes per game lately, but not at the time of game that he did tonight. He played some very important minutes for this Virginia team, and on both ends of the floor, uh, he had a pretty solid game. Chris, this is four, uh, four straight win against the Tar Heels. Not many teams can say that. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think I lost Scott there for a second, but yeah, four straight wins against his North Carolina team, including the ACC tournament championship game last year, uh, and uh, and I guess the lot last loss would have been the ACC tournament championship game back in 2016 for this Virginia team, uh, and that's I guess it's two straight wins in the Dean Dome for this Virginia team. So this is a Virginia program that didn't used to win uh, in Chapel Hill for the longest time, and. Um, you know, it's just you know this this was not supposed. I I don't think anybody out there listening to this podcast, anybody who watched the game tonight, would have been terribly surprised to see Virginia lose this game. It was set up for North Carolina to win. So, uh, and especially after that big run by North Carolina, everything was going in Carolina's favor in that second half run. Uh, somehow Virginia turned it around. Uh, going in their favor in terms of the solid it on ESPN when Carolina. Uh, was it, it was their biggest lead seven? I think it was seven, yes. Uh, the win probability was 85.6% at that point. So, um, and, and maybe, maybe I'm going to go back and tweak those, tweak those, uh, tweak those numbers again because then you have really had some comeback wins on those win probabilities were pretty high again. Yeah, the the last time Carolina had that seven point lead, it was uh, a Luke May jumper, his his last of two jumpers, the second of two jumpers. That little turnaround shot he had at the seven fifty one mark made it fifty five forty eight. Uh, Kyle answered with a three, and uh, and from there on, Virginia outscored Carolina twenty one six down the stretch. And uh, you know, I, I, it just felt like I mean, in that run, Tony called a, a a run timeout, which he normally doesn't do. You've seen him do it a couple times this year. Uh, but there was a, a run-stopping timeout. Virginia led 40-32 after a couple free throws from Ty Jerome, 17-45 to go. Uh, then a 7 nothing Carolina run cut the lead to one. Uh, DeAndre Hunter hit a three, pushed it back up to a four-point lead, but then Carolina went on a, on a 10-0 run. So, you know, I mean, basically two quick runs there for North Carolina. Virginia three points in about a, let's see, that was about a seven-and-a-half-minute stretch. Uh, and it just felt like, I mean, you know, at that stage, you wouldn't fault Virginia again. You just played the tough, emotional game a couple of nights ago. Uh, you're, you're playing a good Carolina team. This is a Carolina team that's number eight in the country. They won seven straight games. They're playing at home. They're 9-1 in the ACC. They're supposed to win this game. Uh, you, you wouldn't fault Virginia uh, for, for giving this one up at all. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think. I mean, you know, guy hit that three. Uh, it was really... I mean, the offense scores 21 points in the last eight minutes. That's two and a half points a minute. That's a pretty good clip. But, I mean, you, you know, it's cliche to say about a Virginia team, but it was defense that did it. It was it was a suffocating defense. Carolina going 2 of 14 in the last eight minutes, uh, really setting the tone for this Virginia team. Carolina uh, just had no answers for Virginia down the stretch after not missing for a long stretch of that second half. Yeah, and, you know, when we don't turn the ball over, you know, I just think that one of the things, we limit our turnovers. That's been such a huge success, key to success. Um, up until we started, you know, we had that real pass last week when we turned the ball over a couple of games in a row. Uh, we were just you know, mopping the floor with teams uh, when we weren't turning the ball over. And I don't think that's a coincidence that we started struggling with the turnovers. So, so having said that, uh, a couple of those games we weren't against high competition, high level competition. We turned the ball over. Like, do you think it's something that you, you just go through, you struggle, and you just, it's, it's kind of a, more of a, a, of a mental thing. It's not really as much as what the defense is going to You're just not concentrating as much. Or, uh, what, do, what do you think contributes to that? And, and all of a sudden tonight, although we had 10, 
we had three down the stretch down in the second half, and, and pretty much that's that's what kept us in the game. I think it was. What do you think that is? I think it was simply it, it's been simply the health of Ty Jerome. Uh, the first game in this stretch where we had the turnover issue was the NC State game where he injured his back. Uh, he wasn't the same in that game. Uh, he didn't play the Miami game. He didn't play the Duke game 100% healthy. He didn't play tonight 100% healthy. Uh, Ty Jerome's your primary ball handler, and uh, you know when you your primary guy bringing the ball up the court is is not 100%, and it's a back issue. That, that's the issue that really affects everything you do in terms of motion. Uh, that 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 has affected Virginia. That said, you know, the only three turnovers in the second half. I was going to point out something, too. Uh, Kia Clark started this game. He played 27 minutes. And, Scott, I just noticed something. I mean, I, I kind of noticed this during the game, and I wonder if you noticed this. Uh, he played 27 minutes. He didn't play in the last 11.32. Uh, he, so he pretty much played 27 of the first 28 and a half minutes, and they didn't play in the last 11:32. Now he was in the game to to really get under the skin of Kobe White and did a great job during that stretch. But then down the stretch, Virginia went big. We we talk about this Virginia team going small, and when I say small, it's not small. They're still playing DeAndre Hunter and Braxton Key a lot in their small lineup, two six eight guys. But they're both they, they're both guards uh, in today's way of thinking of how guards and forwards play. Uh, they went. They went bigger. They played a lot of Huff. They played a lot of Salt. I'm going to look at Salt real quick and see when he last checked out of the game. Uh, Salt also checked out with 11.32 to go. So I'm going to have to look this up, uh, Scott. But Salt and uh, so Salt and, and Clark did not play in the last 11.32. That means you went Guy, Jerome, Hunter, Key, Diakite, and Huff. Rotate. That six-guy rotation played much of that last, uh, that, that last 11.32. That was your death lineup tonight. From that time on, that that was winning time for Virginia without without Clark, without Salt. So I didn't really notice that Scott during the game, but uh, that's that's the winning formula tonight at least. Yeah, he didn't. I uh, didn't. I don't think he had a real good second half. I don't know what what rotation called for it, but he he played great in the first half. I love the steal with Carolina player driving up to one second. He was. Carolina player had control of the ball the next second. Keith is good on it. Uh, I mean, he may have really gotten into, gotten into white head tonight because he did not have a good game. So here's the point I'm going to make. Now that we, we passed it, we got that out of our system, and, and we're not looking for excuses. But, you know, the, the thing that kind of, I, I kind of thought went, I won't say unnoticed, but it certainly didn't get a lot of attention Saturday. Was how much effect did we did that game against Duke? How much effect did not did not having the Akita in the game for the entire second half have? Because he has just become incredible force on defense, and he's also a very good offensive player. But I think he got four block shots. How many more he offered? I have no idea. Uh, without even. Uh, He's, he's just playing so fluid and free. And, you know, he's just become a complete ball player. And, and you know, no one really ever, I guess maybe we were afraid that we were by mentioning that he didn't play, that he didn't play Saturday in that second half, and he did really, we were grasping for straws, looking for something. But now looking back, you know, he couldn't really have a big effect in that effect. I think I agree. I, I, I think you said he had the four blocks. He did have four block shots tonight. Uh, again, I said he only had six points. He only had two rebounds. But, you know, he's he's a guy who does so many things that, you know, you don't see in the box score. Uh, those four block shots, he's, he's not a guy like Zion Williams who's going to block the ball in the fifth row. His block shots actually lead to, to, to turnovers for the other team effectively. We, we, you know, he's a kind of a, a Bill Russell type block shot guy. He blocks a shot. And his team recovers the ball after that block shot. It, it, it gives Virginia possession back. Um, and uh, so, you know, and, and he played, it, it, even if he doesn't block the shot, he's playing good positional defense. He played 23 minutes tonight. Again, didn't start in this game. Uh, but I, I'll also note that he played the last 12-32, uh, it, the, the stretch of the game that Virginia uh, turned things around in the right direction from this one. So, yeah, you know, we, we didn't talk about that, Scott, because – I think we were also just wowed by the 13 of 21 three-point shooting 
for Duke in that game that, you know, our, our, our assumption was, well, no matter who played, it wouldn't matter. They'd have made all the shots. But, you know, if Diakite's out there, you just wonder. I was just going to say, you, you wonder if Diakite's out there, if he's on Williamson, you know, it, does the floor spread quite the same way as it, if, as it does otherwise? And, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know that, uh, that that's not a factor uh, in, that, in, in the way Duke played in the second half of that game. Well, and I and I didn't want to say it because it, I, I just hate that when you say, "Oh, if we had this player, or we had this player," because it sounds like we just want draft us or something else. But now, have we watched the way we played tonight with the DK up here for twenty something minutes? Uh, yeah, I, I really believe that she is such a force on the defensive end of the floor that he he could have made a difference. And we can see Duke again. Uh, what we have to guard against. Uh, is that we can never let him bang hands with anyone ever again. Yeah. We, we, we try to keep him completely, especially that player. Uh, you know, has the white switch finally turned on for good for him? What do you think? I think it has. Uh, you know, we've, we've seen the glimpses, even from his early in his freshman year, that, that he's got the athletic ability. He can do so many things on the floor. He can hit a three-point shot within rhythm. Uh, he can hit that 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 kind of face up jump shot. He can drive to the basket off the face up. He can score in the post. Uh, he's got athleticism around the rim offensively. Then defensively, the positional defense, the box outs, uh, the block shot abilities. He's got quick leap. You know, he he's somebody who can you know he can get up real quick uh, on, on a and he can help defend. He can block a shot one on one in the post. Uh, he really does a lot of everything. Uh, you know, the the one thing that's been the issue for him has been fouls. Uh, tonight, I'm looking at his numbers. I was going to look real quick. He, he didn't seem like to me he was in foul trouble really tonight at all. And I'm just, no fouls. Yeah, you're right. No foul. In fact, a pretty clean game for. Not been in foul trouble. Yeah. If, if you if you can keep Diakite out of foul trouble, in fact, no Virginia players with more than three fouls. That was Ty Jerome with three. Uh, uh, actually, Braxton Key also had three. Uh, you know, Key had a very quiet game uh, in one sense, just the one point. Uh, but uh, he had six rebounds, 22 minutes of game action. Again, he played the last uh, 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 several minutes as well. I looked his numbers up. I think he played the last 10 minutes of the game. Uh, uh, and then, uh, you know, we'll talk about I, – I just – Clark didn't play the last 11-32, but when he played White, he really got under his skin. White, I mentioned, six of 19 from the floor. Uh, you know, he had 17 points, but he had to work his butt off to get them. Cam Johnson, 16.6 of 14. Carolina's guys got points, but they really had to work to get them. Uh, and Carolina also started 3 of 5 from 3. They finished 9 of 30 from 3. So 6 of the last 25. You know, uh, we said it this the other night. You, sometimes you, you tip your cap. Duke made 13 of 21. Tony, after the game, said he thought that Virginia was late on rotations, late closing out. I think you say that when you're a coach. You don't want to say the other team just made a bunch of threes. I thought Duke just made a bunch of threes. Uh, you know, whatever Tony had to say, you're supposed to say that. Uh, t tonight, obviously, regress back to the mean. Carolina 9 of 30 from three, and 30 of their 65 attempts were threes. Uh, what that says is Virginia did a great job shutting down the middle and forcing Carolina into a bunch of long shots. Yeah, and the same Carolina team that scored 113 points against NC State. Uh, but you know, they struggle. Uh, they struggle Saturday against Miami. So I don't know how in depth Virginia scouted that game on Saturday, but, uh, you know, certainly you can't, no one's going to compete with Virginia and Miami for being equally defensive minded teams. But, uh, Yeah, I was going to look real quick at the shot chart, and Carolina doesn't make it easy. This Car the Carolina, I should say, yeah, the, the shot chart's kind of off uh, for tonight. Um, I, I love uh, the, the statbroadcast.com we have access to. It's usually pretty good for this, but Carolina must not input as much info into that as, uh, as Virginia's does. So I'll have to kind of do some math on that a little later to get the shooting uh, by spots on the floor, which I normally love to have. Um, but, uh, the, the, you know, a couple areas of the game, Virginia didn't do well. And the 10 of 18 from a free throw line was very frustrating. And especially sometimes you see a team, 
Virginia's a good free throw shooting team. Sometimes you see a good free throw shooting team struggle from the line. It's because the wrong guys are shooting free throws. It's if Jack Schult, if, if Jack Salt shooting a bunch of free throws. For example, uh, tonight it was the regular. It was the guys you won on the line. Kyle Guy one of three. Uh, 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 Ty Jerome three of five. Braxton Key an eighty percent shooter on the season one of three from the line. So uh, Virginia. Uh, you know, struggled there. Finally, put the game away. Hunter hit a couple of free, free throws with 16 seconds left to help put the game away. Uh, eventually, Virginia caught up in points off turnovers. There was a stretch. Uh, I, I, one of my tweets I had earlier in the game: Carolina had a 10-5 advantage in points off turnovers. Finished 13-13 in points off turnovers, uh, and then also second chance points. Carolina had a huge advantage in second chance points. 15-2 advantage in second chance points. Carolina had 16 offensive rebounds in this game. Uh, which is something, you know, it's something Carolina teams usually do well. Uh, that's really what is obviously that huge discrepancy there is what kept Carolina in this game. Uh, you know, from a Carolina perspective, uh, you know, I would just wonder if we're doing a, a Carolina post game podcast right now, uh, you'd be saying, wow, you know, we shot 35%, we only lost by eight, but, uh, and they shot 50, Virginia shot 53.3%, 11 of 20 from three. Boy, they really had to shoot the lights out to beat us, kind of like we said about Duke the other night. But uh, that that big advantage of second chance points uh, is is something that you don't normally have in a Virginia game. Uh, so credit to Carolina there. Uh, but in the end, you know, all all the anal- analysis we just did, Virginia did something that I don't think a lot of us thought they would do tonight, and that's coming out of Chapel Hill with a big W. Well, I'm in, uh, I mean. I'm going to be honest, I didn't think they controlled the tempo as well as they did. Um, the Tory game, I was just reading up a little bit about Carolina, kind of doing my own little scout report. Um, Carolina, one of the fastest teams, tempo, fastest teams in the country. Uh, Virginia ranked is the slowest. I think the Cardinals, from what I read earlier, played one game the entire season with less than 70 possessions, and guess what? That was 69 with Miami. Yeah. Um, and Virginia only played one game with more than 70 possessions. And that was the game against, we had like 78, maybe. Um, and we controlled the pace for all, but a little stretch there early in the second half. It's just 60 possessions. But, and, and if you look back at how why that's key, if you come back a little bit, um, Carolina out rebounds is 38-27. Yeah. And outscored Virginia 15-2 to in second chance for like 10 bucks. And Virginia controls the tempo and limits the turnovers. Uh, I dare say they're unbeatable. Yeah, this is this is a win tonight. That I mean, you win in this environment and against these circumstances, you feel like your team is is pretty solid. I mean, I felt that way. You, you know, I, I I trolled the message boards after Saturday night's game. I told them all day yesterday, all day Sunday. Uh, there were uh, you know a lot of people posting on the boards about. Uh, you know, feeling like maybe this team had been exposed in some way or something like that. I, I didn't feel that way. I, I felt like, hey, sometimes you tip your cap. Duke, Duke won. Um, that said, you know, I would have, I would have felt after night. If you're 20 and three after tonight, as long as you played well. In fact, I was texting with a friend. Uh, you know, I don't expect to win, but I just want to play tough. And, uh, you know, I felt like it, it felt like when Carolina took that lead in the second half, had that that long run, the 17-3 run. I was a little disappointed because it felt like the, the, the Virginia team was sort of wilting at that stage. But here's here's what happens. And in fact, I tweeted, a knockout blow is coming. Because it really felt like that. It really felt like everything was going in their favor. Everything that Carolina was throwing up was going in. Virginia was turned the ball over. There was that ugly Kihei Clark turnover where he, you know, after a timeout, Carolina came out and did the, you know, a, a sort of a, a half-court trap press. And, and Kihei just made a horrible decision, threw the ball away. And, and it led to a fast break for Carolina. You know, it's it, it's okay to lose, but don't don't get defeated. And it felt like Virginia at that stage was letting itself get defeated, but they they weathered the storm. And it's, it's one thing to weather a storm on the road against a Carolina team as, as good as Carolina is, but you weather the storm, then you come back. That all I can say about this is this this is about as impressive a win as I remember from a Virginia team, uh, maybe ever. Oh, I, I agree. I think it's one of the biggest wins they've had in, in, in Tony Bennett, uh, in the Tony Bennett era. Uh, you know, Carolina was nine and one. They were off to their best start under Roy Williams. That's hard to believe. Yeah. You know, they've won a couple of national championships with Roy Williams. So yeah. they faced the Carolina team in the Dean Dome. 
that the nine and one start was the best start uh, that the Tar Heels had ever had while Wayne Williams was coach, and that, and that, that included two national championship uh, squad. So yeah, I, how could you how could you say this was anything but I just <laughs> enough boys to win the win. Yeah, yeah. Well. So UVA fans, we get to enjoy the week now. We don't play until Saturday. Notre Dame coming to Charlottesville. We can breathe for a while after this stretch. We went one and one against UNC and Duke. What can you ask? But if you split those games, you have to be happy with that. Move on. Uh, tomorrow night, we can root for our new favorite team for the week is Louisville. <laughs> They're playing Duke at home. Uh, Go Cardinals, as far as that's concerned. Uh, I will be the biggest Louisville fan for two hours tomorrow night, as you can possibly imagine. I might even be more intense in that game than I was tonight. And all six of my dogs are sitting on the couch with my wife right now. Uh, and it's, we're about an hour past the game being over, uh, as I'm saying that. So uh, that's tomorrow night. But Scott and I will get back together, of course. We'll, we'll get you ready for Notre Dame. We'll kind of come down from this high and, and try to give you some even-keeled analysis I also I'll, I'll, I'll join Zach Peerless. Zach's currently, as we're speaking right now, he's working on a post game column. I got some post game columns coming up. Neither Scott nor I nor Zach will probably go to bed until about three in the morning uh, off the high of this one. So I'm sure you guys might be as well. Uh, Scott, final thoughts? I'm going to do something on this podcast that just absolutely, and this is clean. This is an X-rated. It absolutely confuses my wife to know it. <laughs> I'm going to watch the game again. And she, she doesn't understand why. You just watch that game. Why are you going to watch it again? Uh -huh. They don't get it, do they? Why is this you not get that? Well, there, there's two reasons you watch it again. You can revel in it now. But also, when you watch it the first time, you're throwing things at the TV, you're cursing when bad things happen. Now you can watch it and actually analyze a little bit. You know, you can actually watch it because you know what's going to happen. Um, you can actually enjoy it a little bit because the first time through, you might not enjoy it quite as much. No, you can't. You're just so emotionally involved in it. Now that you know the game's over, you know what they want, you just sit back and watch it and enjoy it. Like, like we should every game, but we know we can't. No, uh, we. I, I go into every game saying I'm going to do that, and I'm I'm still winless in that respect. So, um, well, so enjoy the enjoy part two there, Scott, and listeners out there. Uh, I, you know, it, actually, yeah, you guys should do the same thing. Uh, and of course, also read Augusta Free Press again. Zach's got a column. I got a column or two coming up uh, to wrap this one up. The, the recap's already on the website if you're listening to this uh, and more. So, for all that said, for Scott German, I'm Chris Graham signing off. Wahoo wah.